Hello and welcome to Earth Star Talk, episode 16. Today we are exploring questions from the Earth Star Talk group on Facebook. And uh, a lot of people have sent some questions in. One is from Daniel Hall. Why do some souls return as ghosts and some not? Well, uh, Danielle, it is uh, not necessarily that they return, but that the uh, essence of their soul is left behind and attached or imprinted into a scenario. For example, we have to understand that our soul is a multidimensional being or a multidimensional existence. So our core essence of soul, of who we really are, is sensed to the many layers and is always ultimately connected to God's source. If it says, for example, in the Bible that we are created in God's image and God is eternal or source is eternal, then we are also eternal in that essence. And that is, means that we are always connected to prime creator, source or God. I oftentimes refer to the parable of the tree of life. The eternal fruit and flower symbolizes the eternity of soul, always connected to source. The trunk symbolizes the beingness on higher realm, for example, angelic realm. The more knobby part above ground, where the tree before it goes into roots is wider, that symbolizes where we could say the seven heavens are, where the soul then gets ready to spread itself thinner into the different root system. Then we have the astral level, which is the divide, the thin layer between the oneness energy and the many different realms of existences in polarity or the different dimensions. And the above one is in oneness, the below one is divided. So like that, when we are going through the lower astral level, we are focusing on an incarnation. And there are many soul strands which are belonging to the one soul. And each soul strand or root strand, golden strand, ends in a soul spark animating a body. Now, our body can be incarnated in higher spheres, higher dimensions, 14th dimensions and whatnot, or ninth dimension, fifth dimensions, or here in three-dimensional existence. And when a person dies, depending how they died, they could be an aspect of them earthbound. But these earthbound aspects or ghostly aspects are more like a leftover or residue effect of the true essence of beingness. It is a residue or an echo of the person's life remaining here linked. And the linkage can happen through many different ways. The linkage can happen through either um, a, let's say, a, a, a chair a person has been always sitting on. And maybe the chair was imprinted by the person's desperation because they couldn't get up. But it's also maybe a beloved chair. They always loved and liked. So let's say you buy a chair like this on a garage sale and um, the people do not want it anymore because their beloved grandfather or grandmother or whatever sat all the time on there. And I don't want to be reminded. So now you buy this and um, the imprint or essence of that grandfather, grandmother, whoever it was who belonged the chair to is now uh, in your home. But the energy doesn't resonate, meaning the leftover residue who was the imprint of in time and space of that grandfather, grandmother doesn't recognize the surroundings, so feels displaced. So makes itself known. I did a house clearing uh, for a TV show called Haunting in the Heartland. 
Um, and there in the parlor were several seats. They didn't show it on TV, but uh, one of the chairs was um, laden with an imprint of an old lady mm -hmm. who didn't want to give up their, her, her authority and always sat in this chair in you know, there's in, in, in frustration of her situation. So um, that chair was oozing her energy into the room, one could say. And when one would sit on the chair, it would be felt as if it would be a ghost. Other ghostly images are imprints on a location. For example, ghosts which come down the stairs always coming down the stairs, always seen there, maybe because they had a short experience in that scenario going down the stairs, maybe some very bad news and they collapsed and they had something going on in the walls and the staircase got imprinted with that short experience. Or um, for example, castles or stone buildings are very well known to hold imprints of happenings uh, very nicely. I took my groups in Germany to old castles and cloisters, and some of them were already in ruins. And I let them lay their heads against the walls, and they could download through the uh, crystalline structure of the stones what had happened here in the castle, or in the cloister, or in the church. So uh, it's not necessarily that the souls return as ghosts, but it's a left do, uh, leftover residue. Um, then there are images of, um, or let's say there are emotional imprints. Let's say somebody got murdered and the soul, three-dimensional soul, which still has an attachment of emotions and thought is imprinted into something, maybe the location of where the murder has happened. Let's say a little girl got killed. I just um, talked about that story with one of my clients. The other day, they went into a house and in that house was this apparition all the time and it talked and when we went through it, it was um, the story of a little girl which got murdered, but I heard at the same time that the essence or soul of that little girl had long moved on, but this imprint of wanting justice, wanting vengeance, wanting, um, you know, a balancing act, a wanted recognition was still imprinted in, lo in the location and got its own dynamic after a while. So what can happen is that these leftover residues or echoes of a person attract similar energies and then they create something third. And that almost can be getting darker and darker and more demonic, um, over time because like attracts like and if there is something dark happened and the spirit when they left their body thought about vengeance and this has to be arranged and this has to be you know corrected and um it can create its own dynamic it can create its own mm, form or structure it can create its own you know energy system in the matrix but it's not that person's soul anymore. I hope I made this clear. If it's not clear, please, Danielle, please um, contact uh, and comment on this video further. But it is a residue. And when we have a linkage, for example, if it's a haunting uh, about us personally, then we have to ask ourselves what linkage uh, what linkage do we have to that event, to that person? What did we not want to let go of? What do we not want to relinquish to a higher order so that we are haunted by something? It is always a key lock principle in all hauntings, whether it's a key lock principle in an object or pre lock principle in a location or key lock principle within ourselves. Okay, then next one is um, 
by Julian Salt. Will China have or find retribution for the COVID and so on? Well, this is a very intense matter. And before I go into that, I want to remind everyone that we should look not into polarity necessarily, but into oneness. This is a theater play of life. And in this theater play of life, we have positive and negative traits and positive and negative happenings. We as soul, believe it or not, signed up for participating in this time and to life in this coordinates and time of space. So we wanted to see how this polarity entanglement with US and China and whatnot worked out. But in the bigger scheme of things, I can tell you and assure you that cause and effect is always in balance. I always say the example of uh, past lives, if a soul would like to explore how it feels to be a murderer, that same soul would have to explore how it is to be murdered. If a person does very bad deeds in full intention, that person who intentionally created these bad deeds will be the recipient of similar bad deeds along the lines. It might not always be seen in this one lifetime. We have to understand that there are many lifetimes which are all ultimately happening at the same time are working out and balancing out. So God, source, prime creator is a just beingness in balance. And in this balance, there will be justice but we might not experience it in a lifetime or we might not see it as we wish to see it. So I would say whether uh, China would see with retributions in regard of COVID or whoever created this crossbreed of a virus, they will have their retribution, I can assure you. When and how is not up to me to decide. Let's give that over to the higher order because there is a higher order. But the biggest of all things is love because nothing can really withstand the energy of love. Even the darkest darkness is only condensed light. And yes, there are ruthless things happening on this planet. And yes, it can get very rough to the point that we ask ourselves, what in the world were we thinking to incarnate at this sort of time where chaos reigns and so on? But when we are open enough to go and look for the bigger picture, then it will become a little bit easier to function in this three-dimensional polarity aspect. And that's where I use the second parable of the pyramid effect. When we look at the pyramid and we stand on the top or on the bottom of a pyramid, on the very right, let's say, put the positive charge. On the very left, we put, let's say, the negative charge. And the positive charge and the negative charge seem to be very distant from each other. Now let's climb the pyramid slowly and steadily. What happens as we're going to the oneness point, as we're going to where everything connects, the charge of positive and negative come closer to each other. And the pendulum swing is left between the two. And then when we go to the top of the pyramid, we see the bigger picture. We see in the distance how everything is connected in the city where the pyramid is built as a symbol. Or we see from a higher ground. I mean, you cannot deny that. And we see things from a higher ground. We see more, right? So let's say the uh, oneness point of the pyramid is our third eye center. And that's the sole point where from which we go into 
oneness. And that's their animation point of what makes our body tick, the soul spark animating this body. So my recommendation is when you're getting afflicted by the duality of this reality too much that it affects your emotions, that you're getting angry, that you get, I mean, frustration and anger is natural, but still when it takes you over, then you're feeding some negative spirits. I'm not saying that COVID is a good thing or a bad thing. It was created, it's an artificial thing. But this artificial thing can be used for many things. So in this regard, my guiding ones always reminded me that everything has an agenda. There is a spiritual agenda, there is a political agenda, there is an economy agenda, and there is a personal agenda. And let's look at COVID. What did it do? On a spiritual agenda, it made us aware that we did not necessarily have to follow the red race of big long commutes. We were put, stay, you know, made to stay put. We realized, wow, it's a kind of nice to work from home. So we don't have to lose energy to traffic jams and time as well. We have more time for ourselves. And then also pollution. Remember that dolphins were swimming back in the canals of Venice or that there was no smog over the Chinese cities or other big cities uh, also in, in India and so on. A lot of pollution was decimated. So it showed us that we could do with less pollution if we wanted to. And then it because of the restructuring of work, a lot of people were going within themselves and thinking, oh my God, I went to a job nine to five, which really didn't fulfill me. What else could I do which might fulfill me more? And then uh, other people, of course, had the karma or the essence to hop off this planet and go into another existence. Of course, when we lose a loved one, that's not very nice. But the crossover loved one goes definitely to a place of beauty and oneness and bliss. Very rarely have I seen an incident where a soul got really stuck. Very, very rarely because maybe an aspect got stuck, but the soul didn't. And then, yes, there were definitely political agendas uh, which pulled the string with some creation like this. I do not believe it was naturally uh, across reference of, uh, you know, this cold and flu scenario. And then with the bad DNA, there is too much which doesn't make sense. And we also have documentations pointing it to certain laboratories. But I do not want to be censored here, so I do not explain any further. But yes, there are agendas, but even these agendas will be coming into a balancing point. What I want to say, though, is that it is very obvious that our reality goes into two different existences. One existence are people who look for the positive in all things, and the other look into the existences of the negative of all things. And so we have a extreme polarity and this polarity is about to rip into two so that people are living in almost like two totally different realities on the same planet. And yes, there are also personal um, reasons for exploring COVID. I believe that all the souls who came here at this time and space came here to create something new. And that's why we have so much chaos before there is a new order. And one of the new order in my book is to go back um, and what the Hopi prophets are saying in all this destruction, what we are creating on this planet, there will come a new tribe of people. They call it the rainbow tribe which makes uh, the earth beautiful and green again and will heal the earth. 
So sometimes destruction of an old format needs to happen to bring a new order in. And I think that's what's happening too. So yes, it is not a nice situation. And it's definitely not a, a nice situation when you lose somebody, but it has its positive side effects for many people as well. I hope that answers a little bit of the question. And again, if you are too meshed up in the dramas of things, try to step a step aside and watch the bigger picture and then come back in and try not to judge. And the best way is to say, I forgive you and I forgive myself how I, um, you know, allowed myself to incarnate at this time. And I forgive the other party for doing what they're doing so that we can all go and see the bigger picture. It is not easy to think that way, but it comes with practice. And then, um, Tina Costello was asking whether we have one soulmate. No, we don't only have one soulmate. And I have to say that some of these soulmate books drive me a little bit crazy because they're creating an expectation in people that everybody has to meet their soulmate and every soulmate is incarnated. And I would say to this, everybody can meet a perfect partner. Is it the soulmate as described in those books? Not necessarily, but I can say that how many realities do we have? How many existences do we have? How many lifetimes do we have? And in each of those, we can meet with a very bonded soul. Sometimes this bonded soul, this what we call soulmate, can be a guide of ours because we had been living as soulmates in another lifetime and maybe were a really strong, good couple whose heart codes were intertwined in a very lovely manner. But then let's say the other part of you did not want to incarnate in this lifetime, so might come and be a guide to yours. And you feel, feel a very strong affiliation with that guy. So, um, on the other hand, we can also meet two of such hard connected people. But I can tell you the most beloved souls give us the most difficult learning lessons. So in my observation in these lifetimes in 3D is that these soulmates are really bringing us a rose garden, what we hope for, but they bring us a lot of learning. They push us forward in the right directions. So these intense encourages from heart to heart space can also result in a push-pull scenario between two beings incarnate. But to come back to your explicit answer, do we have only one soulmate? The answer is clearly no. We have a multitude of soulmates, which sometimes we can meet them in one life or we cannot meet them at all, but we can always meet a perfect partner. That option we always have. So take heart, everyone who hasn't met their soulmate yet, because you can always meet your perfect partner for this particular lifetime. And for this particular reason, you have been incarnated. And sometimes when you do the soulmate calling in structure, you might call them in as a guide. That is perfectly possible. Now, um, then a person called Rinkatram B asked, um, if life is gone and not returning to earth, do Jin mislead us in the name of souls? I'm not quite sure what that means, but I can say this. Uh, the question is here, what is a jinn? I would say it's a spirit. And can spirits trick us in incarnating again? Um, yes. I would say the biggest jinn or the big, biggest forces would be lust, anger, greed, attachments. 
with these forces of lust, anger, greed, attachment, you will reincarnate over and over and over and over. Um, to liberate the soul, you have to focus in and upward. That means a lot of meditation needs to be done. But if you have a wish left, as long as you have wishes left, you will incarnate again to have these wishes fulfilled. Yeah? Thought creates form. If you have a wish, you will get that wish fulfilled. Even if at a different time you do not want it anymore, but you still get that wish fulfilled. So caution about what one wishes. Um, I hope this answers the question. So if you meant nirvana, that after this lifetime, we just go into nothingness nirvana and incarnation is a myth created by a jinn, I would say not quite agree to that in case you mean that. Um, yes, there are, the people live, um, believe in nirvana, the all nothingness. I would say in my book, it would be the energy of all source, all oneness, all God's source where everything started. And that's this nirvana place out of which everything bursts. But I have to say that we definitely have many lifetimes because if that would not be the case, I couldn't have remembered as a tiny little child how it was to wake up at the Ganges River as a beggar at sunrise and hear the bellows of the holy cows and all this sort of thing and uh, how it was to be uh, burned by helping horses coming out of a you know, burning stable, or how it was in um, many different lifetimes, many different existences. I could have known all these things, or I would have had a very tremendous imagination to make all these things up in one split second. But maybe as time and space doesn't exist, I did. At least one time I sold it for sure because I have these experiences and I can tell the tale about them. So um, coming back to your question, Windcraft Charm, I would say the gems who hold us back from um, not reincarnating our last, grade, uh, last anger, greed, and attachment. And those are the gems in my book. Um, so to me, if we ask about what soul means, soul is the essence which emanates from God's source oneness with the golden light and the golden strands coming down and incarnating and creating form, condensing itself into a denser and denser form until we incarnate here in 3D in an artificial matrix of reality, which we have uh, power to change, but certain things are destined because of the cause and effect balancing act. All right, um, then another lady, Marcia Toulouse was asking, what is the best way to contact ancestors? Well, uh, it depends on what purpose. If you want to connect ancestors to ancestors to ask them a question about your heritage, you might use this uh, formula of how to meet your guys' guidance and cross over loved ones and put shares out directly for your ancestors. I think I put a link to their class, how to meet your guides, guardians, and post over loved ones. It is also available in a self-study class. Only that you use standard shares with main text if you know these ancestors. If you do not know these ancestors, there are uh, meditation possibilities where you just sit still in the golden light and ask to be connected to your ancestors, maybe first of the father's lineage or then first of the mother's lineage. And 
just let information come forth. Do not judge anything which comes, just let it flow in. Whatever names come, whatever places come, whatever feelings come, whatever sensations come, write it down after that meditation and you give the direction of the meditation. That means you ask before you meditate to please get information on any ancestors who want to give information from mothers or fathers lineage. Um, that would be a possibility. Or otherwise, as I said, the how to meet your guides, guardians and post over loved ones uh, self-study class. All right, um, this is it for now. Episode 16, answering some questions. There will be more to come. Have a wonderful day. And thank you for tuning in to your spirit connection. Bye-bye.